How's it going guys? So behind me here I have some brand new enclosures we've just made and you guys know I like to make really nice naturalistic awesome looking enclosures so for these I've decided to put in some rock backgrounds on the back I'm gonna be making them myself. I'm gonna be taking you through the whole process of making some nice fake rock that looks really natural and appealing. So stick around, follow along, and hopefully I can teach you something today. Let's get started. So the wood that I've used for these enclosures has a really smooth finish to it. So it's really difficult to get stuff to stick to that properly and be really solid and secure. So what I'm gonna do for these rock backgrounds is actually stick it to a piece of ply board here and then stick this to the background. So I'll be making the rock onto this first. And that's going to be really good because I don't have to get inside the enclosure and muck around all in there. I can just make it outside on this and stick it in. Alright, so we cut our plywood so it's the right length. And this is what I'm talking about. We're going to put it inside. And it's going to sit here on the back. I'm going to raise it up sort of like that. So it sits along the back and I can remove it if I ever need to, so I'm just gonna silicon in the back. So now that all fits, let's start making the fake rock. So to make our fake rock formation, I'm gonna be using some good old expanding foam. This stuff here. I'm just gonna be spraying it on in different configurations, whatever I think will look good. Then after that, I'm gonna shape it and make it look how I want it to look. Then I'm gonna cover it in some sort of uh, mortar, which is a concrete sand mix get that all shaped and looking nice and do some little detailing in there. So I'm gonna kick it into a time lapse. You guys can see the whole process.
guys. As you can see, I've got the background finished and in the enclosure. We ended up actually screwing it in through the back because silicon doesn't really stick well to this form ply we made this enclosure out of. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks awesome. So let's go over a few of the details. So after I carved it, I of course covered it in the mortar mix. So that's just sand and cement. And I made sure to cover every little bit of it so that it's nice and strong and it's gonna be rocky texture all over the whole thing. In this rock wall build, I actually decided to give it a really nice cracking look with a lot of lines and little details like that. And so where I decided to put the cracks for the rock walls was really just following the natural contours of the foam that I originally carved. So anything that looks like it could be its own little bit sticking out, I sort of tried to do cracking all around that or near that to make things a bit more defined and bring them out a bit more to make them pop. Another important tip when making the rock out of the mortar and the sandstone pond sealer is using a paintbrush. I think that's really important to smooth over everything just so it doesn't look like you've just slapped on a bunch of cement and it's just sort of sitting there. If you smooth it out with the paintbrush, it makes it look a lot more like some nice weathered rock that's eroded over time. It has a bit more of that smoother edge to it. And I really like that look. It just looks a lot better, I think. And so when it came to painting this rock wall, what I did was I started with a darker layer of brown and I basically covered the whole thing in that. I had it quite dilute, so even though it was covering everything, the underneath sandstone layer was still coming through quite a bit. And then on top of that, I sort of brushed here and there a bit of a lighter yellow color. So I wouldn't put that everywhere, just to make some highlights on the rock and whatnot. And then again, I just came over the top of that a little bit in areas with another dark coat as well, just to differentiate the look a little bit and have it sort of like a textured look. And it turned out really well. It really helps to give it that aged look. So what we're left with is a tough, durable, rough textured rock that the animals are going to love. It's going to be easy for them to climb up. It's going to last and it looks great. As you guys can tell, I just love making these naturalistic looking enclosures and it's really good fun and really creative to make these rock backgrounds. You know, you're trying to mimic nature, make things look cool, make it look like a, you know, something that's been there for years and years and is just all breaking apart. It's like taking out a little slice of the environment and putting it here inside your room. It's so cool. And keep in mind guys, there's many different ways you can make a rock background like this. This is just the method I tried for this one. You can also do different sort of shapes. You don't have to add the cracking if you don't want. If we look over here at my mountain dragon enclosure, these guys don't have the cracking. Looks a bit more simple, but still looks great. So there's plenty of ways to do this. You don't have to use expanding foam. You can do all sorts of different things, but this is just one more idea that you guys can try out. I encourage you all to give it a go if you can. If you're feeling creative and just practice with it. Like I'll show you one of my first rock backgrounds here. And uh, it wasn't the best thing ever, but it did the job for many years. And uh, I don't think the animals really mind either way how detailed it looks, but it's all about giving it a go, progressing over time. And uh, yeah, I'm keen to improve some more myself. Another thing is you don't want to just throw this in right away with your animal and set it up right away as the minute that it's done and dry. Usually these things have some fumes that it needs to set some more and you know get rid of those fumes and harden up. So, like with this one, it had quite a bad smell for a few days after I put on that pond sealer as well as the paint. So, make sure you let that period pass so everything's nice and set and ready to go and then set up your animal and let them enjoy. So I'm so excited to get the animal in here. Stay tuned for my next video where I set this up for the animal that's going in there. It's one of my oldest animals here and it's about time she got an upgrade. So I hope this video inspired you guys to make some awesome looking setups for your animals. If any of you guys have made some awesome reptile enclosures, cool rock backgrounds or anything like that, please send them through to me through my Facebook page. You can follow that. It's just Coops Reptiles. There'll be a link to it in the description below. Send me some photos, show me your setups and I'll feature them in a future video. Otherwise, check out this funny feeding video one of you guys sent to me. Our animals can be quite special sometimes, but that's why we love them. So thanks for watching guys. Subscribe for more Australian reptiles, enclosure builds, DIY backgrounds, so much more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.